Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, taking a look at The Bad Seed, the first paid DLC for Dead Cells. Uh, Rise of the Giant over here was free to everyone who had the game, so we all already have that. Uh, but The Bad Seed does cost money, um, so I'm gonna see if it's worth getting. It, as you can see, it says it adds an Arboretum, a Morass, and a new boss. So, those are levels. Um, technical term is biomes, basically how... Dead Cells works, all of the areas are randomized, but which areas exist is fixed. So you always start in the prisoner's quarters, then you can go from there to one of the second level uh, biomes, and then from there to one of the third level biomes, etc. So the Arboretum is a new second level biome, and the Morass is a new third level biome, and I believe the boss comes after that. Um, but I haven't seen any of it yet, so let's take a look. Um, unfortunately, you cannot access the Arboretum or the Morass on a brand new save file, so I won't be using one. Instead, I have customized my existing save file to avoid spoilers as much as possible. Um, this custom mode option here lets you switch off like which weapons you have unlocked and things like that, so I've switched off everything I possibly can to get it as close to a new file as possible, while still letting me access the things I want to access, to avoid spoiling things for you all. Um, there may still be some spoilers, so be careful, uh, but hopefully there shouldn't be anything too serious. Uh, if you really do want to avoid spoilers, like what weapons unlock, that sort of thing, then you might not want to watch this, but I've done my best. <laughs> um, basically, you need, uh, I believe it's the Vine and Teleportation runes to access the Arboretum, and you need at least the Vine rune to access the other one, the Morass. So, yeah, and you can't, like, switch off the other runes and stuff, so this is roughly as close as I can get to the defaults with those runes available using a custom game setting. Also, yeah, achievements are turned off because I disabled nearly every item available in the game to make it the defaults. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Uh, it's pretty cool that Dead Cells has this option, by the way, this custom game thing. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different options in there, like what's unlocked, uh, various other modifiers to, like, the way the game works. You can disable the randomization and set up a specific seed, so if you wanted to do, like, a competitive game, that would be cool. Uh, this part you're already, already familiar with if you've seen this game before. I should probably link to my video, like, first looking this game, because I'm pretty sure I did a first thoughts on this. Um, so yeah, I will, I, will, I will go back and do that, uh, but not just yet. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, this is just the prisoner's quarters, we've seen this before, uh, I already have the starting sword, so yeah, um, normally there would be more weapons and stuff here, but because I've customised it to just avoid spoilers as much as possible, we're just getting the starting crappy stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so we gotta look for the, ent uh, the entrance to the Arboretum, which is randomised somewhere in this level, let's get, start looking around, see what we can find. Uh, if you've seen me plays, if you've seen Dead Souls before, the play should look fairly uh, familiar. It's very fast-paced. Your character is quite speedy. Uh, you actually get a speed boost if you uh, kill a bunch of enemies, like as a combo bonus. So yeah, it, it's designed for you to speed run levels, basically. Uh, although there is a, quite some risk involved in doing so, so you do have to be a bit careful. Uh, uh, I don't know where the Arboretum is going to be, because as I mentioned, the level is randomised, so I just have to keep looking around. I Basically, I want to look for a vine, because I know I need to go up a vine to find the Arboretum, as I mentioned. But I'm not sure where it'll be, so hopefully we can find it without too much trouble. Uh... Let's go down here, there we go. Take that shield bearer. And I took my first hit. That's not great. <laughs> uh, let's take out that guy. There we go. Not much point, really, taking out all the enemies just yet. Um, you don't get healed for it or anything. Oh yeah, I've also changed the healing back to the way it is at the start of the game. You can see I have that little tiny health test tube, basically, in the corner of the screen. Uh, bottom left, I mean. Um... If you've played the game, you may know that you can actually upgrade that and get bigger health flasks to have multiple uses, but, you know, I just set everything back to the defaults. 
Uh, just making the game a little harder than it otherwise would be, but I'm pretty good at it, so we're okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, there's a scroll. Give me that scroll. Uh, there probably aren't a whole lot of weapons to find lying around because I've switched off so many items. Uh, which might make things unusually difficult as well. Um, because in normal play of the Bad Seed you would probably keep all your other, um, items and stuff on. I believe this DLC does add a bunch of new items as well. Uh, to the ones that, you know, the game already has to begin with, so that's cool. Uh, I'll get that. Place my old wooden shield with a better shield, there we go. I do need a better sword as well. Uh, I believe the starter weapons basically can't be upgraded. Okay, we found the Promenade of the Condemned. That's not where you want to go, so we're going to have to keep looking around. Um, yeah, so, yeah, there were, there were two places you could go from this first area, the, the um, prisoner's quarters, which were the Promenade of the Condemned and the Toxic Sewers. Um, the Arboretum is now the third option you can take. Here's a vine. Okay, so yeah. I know that the entrance to the Arboretum is behind a vine, so now that we've climbed a vine, that should help us uh, get a little closer. We also need to teleport. Here's the teleporter spot. There we go. So those two steps we just did are the things we needed runes for that made it impossible on a new file. Uh, then, okay, so then we can inspect this. Oh ho, a new arrival. And the rats haven't even got to him yet. I bet there's still some good stuff to scavenge. Nah, just some rusty old key. And the torn up letter. Royal Gardener, with all the respect that I owe you, obey your orders, you will find yourself in the stomach of one of the ticks. For all our sakes, this is your last warning. Signed, Commander Castain. Castain? I don't know how to pronounce that. Ugh, nothing of interest at all. We can get the key, uh, and then keep going here. Okay, so this is the way to the Arboretum. Um, you gotta... Basically, yeah, you jump on these plants, then you jump again so they don't bite you, and you can bounce off of them. And then you use the key that we just got. There we go. And here's the Arboretum. Now, this bothered me a little because I already knew that this is how you get to the Arboretum. You go through the teleport, then you bounce on the little plants, and you can look at that guy to get a key. The reason I know that is because it shows you that all that stuff, even if you haven't bought the DLC. It's just when you try to go through this door, it prompts you to buy the DLC before you do it. Um, which I'm not a fan of. I think it should just not generate the Arboretum parts of the prisoner's cells until you've actually bought the DLC. Um, I kind of get why they haven't, you know, entice you to buy the DLC, but... <sighs> you know, it's not ideal. Can I break through? Yeah, I can. Uh, I don't really want to go to the Collector right now because that'll spoil, like, what blueprints I'm working on and stuff. Um, can I forge these? Apparently I can. Okay, I can make my rusty sword better. I didn't actually know that. It's interesting. Uh, the mutations, yeah. So these are the ones you start the game with. I've switched off all the others. So, uh, we're gonna get... Mm, necromancy. I like necromancy. <laughs> okay, so now we're actually gonna see some new content. This is the dilapidated arboretum. Once frequented by the lords and ladies of the island, they often noted that some of the mushrooms seemed to shrink from their presence. Okay, so having led ourselves into the game with that eight minute intro there, let's check out the new area. Uh, let's see. Over here we've got, uh, hmm, some familiar enemies, some new enemies. I haven't seen that guy before. Some more of these, which makes sense. It's pretty much expecting that. Uh, lots of mushroom people by the looks of things. Which was sort of hinted at by that description we heard. Uh, we got some spiky people, got some more regular zombies. I could really use a better weapon than this. <laughs> but I haven't found one yet. Uh, there's a the cherries. Oh yeah, um, I don't know if I mentioned this in my previous video about dead cells. You can change what the food looks like. It just changes the sprite basically. So if you don't like eating meat, you can change it to fruit or vegetables. Or... Baguette, baguette, b baguettes. <laughs> I can't pronounce baguette. Oh my goodness. Um, well, this looks really nice. I am liking the aesthetic of this area. The, the parallax scrolling effect there is real nice. Uh, I'm not sure what to expect. I know there's supposed to be some new items here. 
Uh, I'm guessing I need to defeat some of the new enemies to get the blueprints. But beyond that, I'm not so sure. Eek. Yeah, I'm reluctant to go too close to these guys because my sword is terrible. <laughs> what is that thing? That's just a background. It lo looks like some sort of monster. Hmm. Whoa. Okay, that's an interesting maneuver. I'm guessing the pink stuff is poisonous. Because it looks poisonous. Also, the mushroom people seem to be able to like, blend in or something? I don't know. Hmm, a little confused. Uh, I've seen these guys before. They're much easier to take out with a bow, but I haven't got one, so... There you have it. Uh, I've got these spiky guys too, who really annoy me. Probably should have given myself more healing potions, even though it's a little bit of a spoiler. Since I explained the fact that there's better healing potions anyway, and it's kind of an obvious upgrade. Ah! I'm not playing so well! <laughs> oh my goodness. Ugh. I'm gonna drink my one healing potion. Yeah, I, sh I should definitely have kept the flask big, even though I turned off everything else. That was probably a mistake. Because I'm gonna have to play back to this area from the cells if I mess up. Which is likely. Oh, a shop! Uh, I don't have enough money to buy anything, though. Oh, okay, when they're doing that, they're shielding. Interesting. <sighs> it would have been good to buy a better weapon, but I can't afford it. Um, hmm. Yeah, I really like the look of the Arboretum. I don't know how much content we've got here, but this one level looks pretty good. Um, I'm playing it a little safer than normal, because, um... I don't really want to die here and have to redo everything. I mean, I'd have to just redo the prisoner's cells, basically, and I might even find the Arboretum sooner, but, you know, whatever. Run, 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 run. Okay, another teleport. Yeah, this is a very intricately laid out sort of area. I like it. Um... I believe there's supposed to be a chest here because it's uh, showing up as yellow. Oh, oh, it's one of these. Okay. Uh, yes, I'll have, I'll have the balance blade. Thank you. I can't sell my rusty sword, but balance blade is much better. So that's a huge improvement. I believe it sometimes doesn't spawn chests that otherwise would if you turned off too many wep too many of the unlocked weapons, which is a bit annoying. Oh, Toxic Cloud, that's good. So yeah, this sword, when you kill someone, they make a cloud of poison gas, which is a handy thing to have. <laughs> Why is there a hole there? Hmm. Okay, we've got a door here. Okay, so yeah, this is looking like an intricate sort of area. Oh my, what's this? Botanical beaker. How did they get the skeleton in the bottle? Man vs. Wild, are the botanical tr treatises? I spread it on the ground. I wonder what's in this flask. Can I drink the flask or something? No? I guess not. Because I could use a heal if I can find something. Apparently seeing the dead rise wasn't enough. Today it's the plants that are up and about raising hell. The king's new best friend has ordered one of them captured. Alive. I'd like to see that. I think this is just a lore room. Like, it doesn't have any, like, mechanical benefit. It's just to tell you more about the setting more than anything else. Which is okay. Uh, those are fun. Ooh, there's the exit. The Morass of the Banished. Yeah, let, let's just keep going, I think. I'm getting a bit of an idea of what the two levels are like, and there's a good chance I'll die. So, the network linking the various parts of the island will bring you into contact with some rather surprising individuals. Okay, uh, I didn't find any blueprints, so I'm not going to bother cashing in my cells, uh, since I don't need to talk to, the co talk to the collector. There's the collector. Goodbye, collector. But yeah, you don't have to do that, you can just smash this door open. There we go. Uh, no, those are fine the way they are. Uh, I'll have another modifier. Let's have, um, combo. Hmm. A lot of the modified, the um, mutations I really like aren't available because I switched them off because they need to be unlocked. 
Taking to the trees may have kept the banished safe from the ticks, but it didn't save them from the ravages of the malaise. That's not good. Okay, so here's the morass. Uh, we've seen, like, a gist of the Arboretum. Like, each of these levels, you play through them a lot because of the game's, you know, randomised roguelike start from the beginning every time you mess up sort of deal. Uh, so the fact that we got through it in just a few minutes is not like an indictment of the level or anything. That's normal. Oh my. Um, hello. You look scary. Do I have to fight you? Uh, yes, I think so. Oh my god. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> oh my god, what? <laughs> what just happened? Oh, wow. Um, I might just drop out and change the custom settings so that I have more health flasks, just to make doing this again a bit a bit less some um, daunting. <laughs> oh my goodness! Options? Can I? No. Um, I think I want to go quit. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna drop into the uh, custom mode settings and just adjust that. Uh, advanced options. Switch that back off. There we go. And I'll leave everything else on its default, so that should be fine. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Okay, cool. Uh, you got a bit of a glimpse of some of the other things that... Um, the other weapons there, but hopefully it didn't spoil too much. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, I have my full four health flasks now, so I should be less likely to get deaded. Uh, although it's still a hard game, so I might die. Uh, let's take the bow this time. Still not great. Like, these are the beginner weapons. They're not fantastic. And I'd normally want something better, but, you know, these are what I have. Okay, so yeah, we've got to get to the prisoner's cells again, uh, which is a little annoying. Uh, hopefully we can uh, find the Arboretum a bit quicker this time. We'll see how we go. Oh, uh, that's a challenge rift. Basically, you go in there, it offers you a real good item. If you take the real good item, you have to get through a platforming challenge to escape. Uh, so, I'm not going to do that right now. Ooh, hello. Ah! I would like this chest. What is it? Okay, throwing knives. That's good. I'll ditch the bow, get some throwing knives. Uh, it's definitely an improvement on what I had. Here's a shop. Uh, I don't have a lot of money. Uh, I think I can get something by examining the prisoner. Guess he wanted to choose the time of his death. It's only a faded flower within his fingers. A moment of silence. Nah, I've got better things to do. Oh yeah, you get an amulet. I believe it's randomized which one you get from this room, but you do get an amulet, which is better than the prisoner's collar that does nothing. So it's worth doing. Uh, if you happen to find that room. Uh, I'm gonna boost my brutality. There we go. Ooh. Toxic, toxic cloud gas. <laughs> cloud gas. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. I got the amulet with the smash attack thing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna place the rusty sword with the firebrands. It's kind of a risky move to have two ranged weapons and no melee weapons, but um, anything's better than the rusty sword, so let's do it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we found the Promenade of the Condemned again, but that's not what we're looking for. So let's just warp our way back down here and have a look around. Okay, this is Vine. This is probably where we need to go. Yes, this is the spot. Okay, so... Uh, let's keep going this way. Arboretum, yes! It looks like the, um... The key and stuff aren't there anymore. I guess that's just the first time you go to the Arboretum. You'd have to talk to that guy, take his key, bounce on the plants and stuff. It's simplified, which is nice. Uh, we actually made it here in less than two minutes, so we can just duck in here and grab some better stuff, which will help us out. 
Uh, let me see. Yeah, let's take the better amulet. Uh, it feels like a waste if I don't spend some of these. Uh, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Ah! I'm just gonna dump into something. There we go. <sighs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh yeah, I like necromancy. Okay, so here we go to the Arboretum, Arboretum for the second time. Hopefully this time I'll survive. Um, I do have better equipment already, so that's a good start. Uh... Oh, dappled light, soothing fountains, and a fresh... Uh, and a fresh air brought the royals, aristocratic, and various hangers-on. Unfortunately, they brought the stink of the royal court with them. So, you can go both ways in this area, it looks like. No, because there's a room over here. I wonder if these plants are more weak to fire than other types of enemies. It would make sense, I think. There's a lot of spikes around, which I guess fits with the fact that we had to get up some spiky walls to get in here. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure why the uh, predisposition towards spikes it doesn't really seem to fit. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Ar Arborita always have spikes in them, and I just haven't seen them before. I don't know. Can't imagine why though. I think they're like a greenhouse or something, right? Like a room for plants. Um, doesn't really seem like spikes are suitable, but, yeah. I know other parts of the game are spikes, too. Having the little cherry sit around there fits, but, of course, it's not always a cherry, depending on what you have your settings set to, so, hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. I am still taking a lot of hits here. I'm not playing super well, honestly. It doesn't really help that I had switched off a whole bunch of stuff that I would normally have that I'm sort of used to having. Because, <laughs> yeah, as you might expect, a lot of things you can unlock are better than the things you start the game with. Uh, so I'm pretty limited uh, in terms of what I can use. Although I do really like Necromancy. I do often use that, uh, even in my normal playthroughs, despite it being one of the default things. It just seems handy to me to have a source of uh, healing that you can get without having to spend your very limited healing flasks. Oh wow, you just smash straight through that. Interesting. Scroll of power, upgrade my... hmm... purple? Yeah, I think my purple. There we go. Ow. Dang it. I was trying to um, smash through the ground, but I accidentally just double jumped. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, all these mushroom guys are new enemies um, that I haven't met before, which is neat. Uh, some of these other guys are existing enemies that I've met in other contexts and hate because they're really annoying. <laughs> Guys with the spiky backs, I don't like those guys. Those are very frustrating. Those guys, this guy who's coming at me now. Don't like you. Oh, 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 blueprint. Uh, what is it? Flashing fans. Okay, so this is one of the new items that's in the DLC. You cannot get this without getting the DLC first. And I just got it. Um, I, I don't actually get the item yet. I have to actually go to the uh, the um, collector at the end of the level and drop off the blueprint in order to get it. But you get the idea. Okay, hang on. These are identical. Uh, yeah, I don't need that. 
I'm gonna just take a quick swig because I got a blueprint and I hate losing those when I accidentally die, so. <laughs> There's the ramparts, you can go there if you want. Uh, that's one of the like more familiar levels. You go there from the promenade of the condemned. That's like the basic path, I guess. Is this stuff poisonous? Okay, no, it's just, just pink water. Okay. I had to check. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's, it's it's just important to know these things, and it's it's a little hard to find out in normal play. Which I suppose is a criticism of the game. Uh, I think I want to just take the teleporter from over here to get back over. So yeah, if you go into this area on the left side, that seems to go to the ramparts specifically, more or less. And I'm assuming if you go to the right, that's how you get to the new area, and that's just how it's laid out. They've got two of these uh, separate arboreta, even though it's just called the dilapidated arboretum. Because these are clearly separate buildings, right? So there's, there's clearly two arboreta here. seem to be extra vulnerable to, like, uh, fire attacks, but maybe they are. It's a little hard to tell. It would make sense if they were, because they're all plants and stuff. Yeah, this area seems fun. It plays a little differently to the areas I'm used to, and there's clearly, like, new items to be had, which is exciting. Uh, so, that's cool too. Uh... I'm not sure how custom mode handles you unlocking extra things, because, you know, I've switched off lots and lots of weapons. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. Place the firebrands with the nutcracker. So the, the nutcracker is, yeah, it's a big old hammer axey thing. Uh, it's real slow, but it does a lot of damage. Uh, it's also unlocked from the beginning, so yeah, you've probably seen one before, if you've seen this game being played. <laughs> Ah. Okay, so those guys can, like, uppercut you into traps and stuff. That's pretty scary. It makes the, like, prevalence of spikes in this area a lot more threatening than it otherwise would be, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, I don't have to fire anymore, that's right. Forgot. I'm using these throwing knives a lot. Okay, what do we got here? A fountain, there's a door, there's another fountain. Uh, we can upgrade one of our stats. Uh, yeah, green. Let's get some green. Uh, one of my weapons does use some green, so it should be good to upgrade it a bit. Ah! Yeah, I think we should be fine to survive this time, because I've got still three swigs in my flask there. And much better weaponry, so yeah, we should be okay, I think. Uh, although I don't have any skills, you can see my ZL and ZR buttons are empty, so I'm a little worried. Would be good to find some, uh, like a sinew slicer or something. Which is also a starting weapon, so it should be around. I mean, it's a skill, it's a starting skill, but yeah. It, it, it should be possible to get one at that point. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, uh. Okay, here's another entrance to the Morass. Uh, I've already taken over 8 minutes, which is the time limit for level 2 
uh, time stores, and I think there isn't one here anyway. Ooh, Mushroom Boy. I don't know what that blueprint is, but I got it. <laughs> I guess I'll check what it is when we uh, go through the door over there into the morass. Let's have a look. Uh, the Collector will pro provide you with invaluable assistance. If you can reach him. Heck, he sure will. Okay, so... That visit to the Arboretum went a lot better. Um, so that's good. <laughs> okay, there isn't actually a time door here anyway, which is interesting. Uh, I'm gonna have to talk to this guy to cash in the blueprints, so hopefully we don't spoil too much. Flashing fans. Repelling a projectile causes you to inflict critical hits for 8 seconds. Okay, so... Flashing fans are a melee weapon that repels projectiles, which causes you to do critical hits. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, mushroom Boy is a power. Spawns a friendly Mushroom Boy, which charges and interrupts enemies, inflicting 57 damage and 115 extra damage if the enemy hits a wall. Trigger it again to inflict 345 damage and violate your soul. Violate my soul? What? <laughs> Alright, well, um, they look- so they sound cool. Uh, I believe there's, like, a dozen new, like, things added in this particular- like, a dozen new blueprints to be found in this DLC, so I found two of them, and they sound pretty cool, so that's a good start. <laughs> Hopefully we can do a bit better when we fight this next thing. As the melee spread, the putrid sense, stench of the fetid water and plagues of singing creatures weren't the only things the surviving banished had to deal with. Oh no. Is it morass or morass? I think it's morass. I'm guessing, yeah, it starts the same way. We got this door here. We go through, and we fight this thing. I think it's not actually that strong, so we might be okay. Uh, or we might not. Do I have to beat this thing every time I come here? Because that's going to be pretty annoying. Maybe it's like a first visit unlock sort of thing. Okay, got it. Oh, that took half of my health flask. <laughs> okay, um, who's this guy? I think you see these guys much later in the game in normal play, so that's interesting. Hmm. Okay, and we got a lot of these guys. Gross. And we got, uh, blow dart guys? I think those are new. I think those are new enemies in this area. These guys aren't new, and I hate them. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, this area seems much, much harder than the one we just in. Compared to the Arboretum, this is very dangerous. Uh, even if that boss, you know, is only a one-time thing, this is still much harder. All of these normal enemies are very tough. At least, you know, some of them are. That one, these guys seem to be fairly squishy, so that's good. <laughs> Ow! What was that? Oh, oh, that's a blue dark guy. Take that, blue dark guy. These guys are quite quick, so um, using a slow weapon like the Nutcracker isn't really ideal. <laughs> I am really, really scared in this area. <laughs> it's, 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 it is hard. This is a hard part of the game, I've got to say. I'm doing better than I was before, obviously, because I made it past the first bit, but it's still not easy. Um... <laughs> ah.
I'm basically staying in motion because everything else seems to be moving quite quickly and I'm scared. <laughs> oh, a cursed chest. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's get our foot bitten. What's the reward? Uh, let's see, scroll of power. Uh, let's upgrade uh, our green stat. Frost blast, that's way better than these throwing knives. Okay, now I need to kill 10 things without taking a single hit, so um, we'll see how that goes. Curses are scary. Okay, uh, that's a good start. Um, what are we seeing here? Just a very tall room. Cellar. Doesn't seem like it goes anywhere. Oh, I say, I say, I'm paused. It must be like a, it must be a law room of some kind. Hmm. Oh no! Ah. Oh, <laughs> I took them out, but they took me out with some sort of, like, splash damage or... Dang it! Yeah, curses are really, really unforgiving in this game. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, uh, let's give it one more shot. I really do want to get to the boss if I can, but that requires me to get through both of the areas preceding the boss, which is... easier said than done. I probably should avoid the curses, since, um, yeah, curse is bad. <laughs> run, 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 run. Tonic. It's good to have. I don't usually use tonics much, because they're basically one use. You have to use your health flask to refill them once you've used them. They have a pretty good effect, generally, but... They're, like, so... I feel, I feel they're kind of situational, I guess. Like, they heal you and they usually do something else as well. This one heals and makes you invulnerable for a few seconds, burns the ground around you. But yeah, you can only actually use it, like, once. And then you have to actually drink a health potion to make it come back, which means you have only four uses of it, or less, depending on how you ration out your health potions. Whereas everything else is just on like a time limit, um, which is much easier to justify using because you know you get you get it back in a little bit. Give me them cherries. Give me them open doors. Give me them scrolls of power. I'll take green. Survival increased. <laughs> okay, is there a weapon up there? There's obviously something up there, but I don't know what. I can't really see it because it's covered by the glowing. Ooh, it's a broadsword. Yeah, I'll have that. Broadsword 2L. Uh, yeah, that sounds really good. Nice. The broadsword is very similar to the Nutcracker in, in behavior. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's very useful. Uh, especially compared to the rusty sword that is terrible. I probably want to switch out my shield for some sort of ranged attack, like a throwing knives or something if I can find them. Uh, just because the broadsword is very slow and it's the only way I have to attack right now. That's worse than the other tonic. Yeah, I don't want that. Normally you can sell things you don't want, but that that's another one of those upgrades that I've disabled, so I can't sell things I don't want. <laughs> I may have gone overboard in switching things off to try to reduce spoiler prob problems. Um, whoops. There's the Promenade of the Condemned, which is always what I seem to find first. I'm not sure why that is. <laughs> uh, let's try going here. 
Okay, vine. Yeah, yeah, we climb a vine. That's a good start. And we go. Let's try this way. I'll take that. There's a grenade. It's an infantry grenade, which is the worst kind, but whatever. Toxic sewers. That's not what I wanted either. But we're getting there. Well, let's walk back over here and see what's down here. Aha! Teleport room. This'll be it. I mean, the teleport room is the thing I have. That's like a teleport podium, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure those things have an actual name apart from things that make it teleport. Which isn't really a name, it's just a description. <laughs> okay, uh, we're actually at 30 kills, which is pretty good. Uh, that's how you unlock the perfect kills door in this area. The first round it's 30 kills, and then after that it's 60, and then more. But yeah, we're going well, we're going well. Uh, pretty cool. <laughs> okay, uh, so we're back at the Arboretum again. Let's just duck in here and get whatever this has to offer to us. Uh, firebrands level 4, Golden Amulet 4, Wolf Trap. Uh, I think the Firebrands instead of the Shield is probably a good upgrade there. There we go. Uh, I've got 30 cells, I'm going to waste them, so... Uh, spoilers, 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 please don't look! I'm gonna spend these on the new... the new stuff from the DLC, so I can hopefully get to try it out... soonish. <laughs> Necromancy! Oh yeah, I didn't actually take any hits. Oh no, I think I took an A hit, and then... I took a... I ate some cherries, but then I got a whole bunch of unhits. You already seen that message? Back to the Arboretum! So yeah, um, it's just sort of demonstrating the general flow of the game, as well as uh, the specifics of this new DLC, I suppose. So if you weren't familiar with the game already, you might be a bit more familiar with it, having seen this video. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, these firebrands are very good to have. <laughs> I am glad I decided to pick these up. Ah, I set on a spike. Why did I do that? That was just a terrible move. That move was bad and not good. But yeah, fire branding everything is working real well, so I'm gonna keep doing that. <laughs> Cause yeah, it's like a level four fire brands. That's pretty good at the current status. Like, we're in the, I think this is the level 3 area. Like, nothing we find, like, stuff we find at random is going to be level 3, and we've already got a level 4 weapon, which is, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Why is there a gap there? Is there like a secret or something? Hmm. I don't know. Alright, come back and look at that when I have more stuff enabled. So it lets me experiment with it a bit more. <laughs> Hmm. There are some gaps in the ceiling too, but that's less likely to be a secret, I think. Oops. I think... Huh. Bouncing up on those things actually kills stuff. Interesting. Like, not just you. Like, it kills stuff you bounce into rather than hurting you. Which is a cool feature. Gimme them cherries! Whoa! I'm not really sure what just happened, but I I'm, I'm okay, so th I guess that's good. <laughs> I think these bouncy plants have some very strange properties that I haven't quite figured out yet. Since they are brand new and I'm not very used to them. I do really like the colours they're using here. Ooh, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna upgrade. That's an upgrade. Did it do? Ah, don't go in there. Oh, you're just taking it, take any damage, so we're okay. Uh, up, 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 up. <laughs> I imagine there'd be more than two blueprints to get here, so I should probably keep trying to kill everything I see to see if it drops a blueprint. Ah, I got bitten. 
I don't think I can hurt those plants, but maybe I can. Let's see. It doesn't look like it. I'm getting the impression they can't be damaged. Ow. I need to stop touching the spikes. Gosh dang it. <laughs> touching spikes is bad for you. You're going. Scroll of power. Uh, let me see, let me see. Red? I think red. I know it's called brutality, but sometimes you just gotta say the name of the color <laughs> instead, because color coded mechanics. Actually, I wonder how well this plays if you're colorblind. Hmm. Hmm. Let me just have a quick look, you know, while I'm here. Hmm. I'm finding it a bit hard to tell which color things are. So that's not great. Can I... Is that like a color glowing mode or something? It doesn't look like it. Hmm. Yeah, that's a bit disappointing. I know that, like, normal color blindness, I mean, I mean, the most common color blindness, like red green color blindness, is probably. No, that won't be okay because red and green are the color. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, that's not great. Um, <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. It doesn't really show that information in any other way, apart from the colors of the weapons. Hmm. It's kind of weird that it does that, because you can see those little scrolls and stuff on the broadsword. Like, you could easily show that information in other ways, at least on the menus. But I don't think they do, which is very strange. Okay, here's the... whatchamacallit. The next bit. You know the one. <laughs> um, let me see. Let's give myself purple. But first, let's go down here and see what this is. Okay, you can also go to Prison Depths from this level if you want, but I don't want. I want to keep going to the Morass, so let's keep going to the Morass. Uh, however, I can see that there's a loot room back there that I missed, so let's go back and get it. Also, let's take a swig. Since our health's a bit low. There we go. Now our health isn't a bit low. We have good health again. Aha! Okay, loot room. Uh, let's replace our tonic with a sinew... Oop, I meant to do the other one. Oh, I can just swap around, that's fine. There we go. Okay, we have a sinew slicer and a grenade now. There we go. Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, I like sinew slicers. Basically, you just drop them on the ground and they shoot stuff for you. So you don't have to... So you can just dodge the, their attacks and not worry about actually attacking. It's handy for bosses and stuff. There's a bunch of other items that are good in that way too, but... Sinew slicers are very common, since they don't need any upgrades. Anyway... Yeah, I'm surprised that they didn't display the colours in some other way, like... They, they could have little symbols on them, or shapes or something, that indicates... ...the different... <sighs> they don't, though. Hmm. No, not great. It's not ideal. Uh, let me see... Yeah, I'm gonna upgrade the... whatever it was, the Mushroom Boy. Oh, I haven't got enough. I was hoping I could get the Mushroom Boy and try him out in the next level, but I can't. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah, there aren't a whole lot of good mutations to take. You get a maximum of three uh, from consecutive, like from separate stage transitions, uh, and a lot of them are really good. But I only have a few unlocked on this set on the settings we're using. So yeah. Anyway. To the morass of the banished. Let's see if we have to fight that boss again. Yep, we do. I kind of suspected so, but I'm a little disappointed. 
I was hoping we could skip this part because I've already done it, but apparently not. Like, it's only worth one cell, so it's not really that rewarding. Mm. But yeah, you can see the sinew slice is helping a lot because I can just dodge around and it attacks things for me. Oh, blueprint. Rhythm and bo Boozuki. Is it like a guitar that you hit people with, or...? <laughs> I mean, it's obviously a guitar. I don't know what, what you, how you attack with it, though. Um, or is it some sort of weapon? No, weapon. Well, some sort of instrument. Like, it's not a guitar, maybe. I'm not sure. I can't tell apart different instruments. <laughs> it's, it looks like a guitar, but I think it's probably... A... B a... B B I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Okay, so that guy throws his axe. That's what hit me before. That's pretty nasty. Oh, yeah, the little pink guys are my friends with the bows. Uh, they're spawning from some of my weapons. They're called biters, and basically they attack my enemies for me. It's handy. And thankfully they look very different to the uh, little enemies that are also bitey. Uh, so you don't get them mixed up when you're playing, which is good. Okay, so yeah, the reason the boss respawned is because they still had a blueprint, but it might keep respawning after that just because... Uh, well... <laughs> Okay, we might actually get through it this time. He's a chest. What is it gonna be? It's a bear trap. Oh, it's a wolf trap. Um, yeah, I replaced my grenade. That sounds better. Basically, uh, you drop that. If an enemy stands on it, they get immobilized and they're like, they get weakened, so they take more damage from your hits and stuff. It's good. Uh, so yeah, that was worth the the side trip. I might get to try the Mushroomy Boy against the, the next boss, that would be cool. Um, when you, uh, actually defeat a boss, you immediately... No, sorry, when, when you, uh, unlock a blueprint, you immediately get the item. Uh, right then and there in the collector, in the collector for the first time. Like, it starts randomly appearing elsewhere, but you also get one straight away. Uh, which is cool. Yeah, Sinew Slice is not very strong, it's only like level 2, and isn't really uh, holding up compared to some of my other attacks at this point. Still, it's good to have. Also, I got a Spiked Shield, which I think is also only in this DLC, so that's cool. I assume I can like, whack stuff with it, because it's got a spike on it. It's gonna be fun. Okay, we're outside again. Oh no, it's another one of these things! That one was much easier. <laughs> okay, so you'd have to fight a couple of those to get through by the looks of things. But yeah, the bear trap helped a lot because it couldn't turn around while it was immobilized. So that was a cool trick. Uh, let's see, let's see. Let's give me more... More, more, more... More... Purple. There we go. It's actually a better idea to focus on one stat instead of all three, because it means your weapons get much more powerful. Uh, but you get less HP gain, so it's a bit of a trade-off. But getting your weapons more powerful is, is strictly better, so... It depends on how good you are at dodging attacks, so...
As you can see, I'm not great at it. <laughs> oh my goodness. that blue gunner. Take that other guy. I think they're called blow gunners, but I'm not really sure. You don't really get enemy names in this, um, except when you're fighting elites, and then it tells you what kind of enemy they are. But you don't fight elites very often, so. And I haven't seen any for these new enemies yet. Goodness gracious me, I am scared. I'm probably gonna die soon. Ah, pretty hit. Dang it. I was comboing really well until then. As usual, you combo real well until you take a hit and then you stop comboing well. <laughs> Just basic logic, really. Hopefully we're getting close to the exit. I don't really know where it is. Uh, I'm reluctant to pick up the cursed treasure because of what happened last time, so I'm gonna go without. Uh, what I've got is pretty decent anyway, so I should theoretically be all right. Oh, this is that law room from before. Yeah, I still don't get the point of this. Is there anything I can do in here? It doesn't look like it. Can I interact with any of these things to get some text? Also doesn't look like it. Um, no. I got a big old smash attack. Uh, no, that's about it. Hmm. Confusing. Okay, let's have a quick look around. Where do I need to go? Uh, I think I need to go here and then down. Get that scroll, which lets me upgrade Ooh, my, my green. Let's have some more green. Oh, blowgun. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Of course, blowgunners have a blowgun. <laughs> Okay, we're probably about to fight another boss down here, so I'm gonna quick, take a quick swig. Not really a boss, these guys, but you know. Yeah, these guys are not tough if you have a bear, bear trap to use, because yeah. <laughs> they are uh, a massive threat otherwise though. At least, insofar as I can tell. I may just not figure out how to fight them yet, which is very possible. Oh my god, so many blow gunners. Oh yeah, we can't open that door in the background, the one that says open, just to be clear. If you try, you'll just, he'll just knock on it and then 
one guy through. Why not? Okay. Uh, what the heck? That's a big jump. <laughs> Okay, those are powerful. That's pretty scary. Uh... Oh, watermelon. Yes, give me the watermelon. That's um, the better healing item if you have fruit enabled. It's sometimes other things, but that one heals half your health instead of only 15%, so it's a lot better. As far as I know, there are only two healing items, unless this DLC added one that I just haven't managed to spawn yet. But I doubt that, given I've only been seeing the same items as before, even with the DLC enabled. <laughs> oh, hello. Secret. Uh, throwing knife. Yes, that is an upgrade. What is this? What am I looking at? Is this a law room? Yes, it is. Vaguely religious, these symbols seem to evo evoke a holy maternal figure. And a strange ex exhortation to consume wine? Hmm, interesting. The nest. Okay, so this is where I was looking for. This is the boss. We've made it. It's not very bright, but at least there aren't any monsters here. Okay, I'm gonna give this one go. I've been playing for an hour already, according to the timer. So I'm gonna give the boss one try, and if I mess up the boss, that's it. Uh, hopefully I can pull it off, but I might not be able to. Okay, yes, yeah, Spike Shield inflicts major damage on blocked enemies, that's cool. Uh, the Blowgun inflicts a critical hit if you hit an enemy from behind. That's cool. Uh, what about this Rhythm and Boo Bowzowki? I think there's a kind of instrument called something with Zauki in it, and that's what it's referencing, but I don't know it. The second and third hats attacks are critical if you strike at the right time. Hmm. Let me just think. Should I... Should I switch out my uh, items for different ones? Hmm. I can get Mushroom Boy. Hmm. Hmm. Let's get Mushroom Boy and replace some my sinew slicer because it's really low level anyway. Let's see what this does. Okay, so it makes a little mushroom boy, follows you around. And if you press the button again... Oh, I see. It violates your soul because the mushroom boy horribly explodes. I get it. <laughs> That's cursed. Um, uh, my goodness. Uh, let's just, uh, dump some of these cells into another item. Uh, let's try getting the rhythm and bazooki instead of the, um, sword I have. Because the sword is only level 2, so upgrading to something else would be a good idea. And then let's put uh, some souls into the spike shield. See, because it's 5 instead of 2. There we go. Okay, that is really funny. <laughs> okay, uh, yep, let's go. Uh, we can get a third mutation, so let's get... Um, Killer Instinct? I don't know. None of those are very useful for a boss battle. Although I don't know what this boss is about. There might be things that are use it's useful for. So we'll see. Let's go. Oh, and the, the, t the cooldown when the, um, on the Mushroom Boy is really long by the looks of things. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to give the boss one try and then that's it for this video. So let's see how we go. Maybe I can pull it off. Usually these bosses take many tries, so I might not be able to pull it off. Oh, this effect is nice. It reminds me of that Pyrenoic Arena of Time. Mama Tick. 
Oh my. Uh, oh my goodness. Ah! Mushroom boy, do some, do some mushrooming. Okay, yeah, Mushroom Boy doesn't do a lot of damage, but if I don't, like, horribly murder him, he will continue to do a little bit of damage. So that's good. Can I use the bear trap? Yes, I can. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's terrifying. Yes! First try, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, the blueprint is probably left scythe claw. Huh, that's not what I expected. Uh... Okay, let's advance. Oh my goodness, that was awesome. The stilt village in the graveyard. I've been to both those places before, so that's the end of the new content. Uh, but... That was really good. I really like this boss. Um, I'm gonna just put these souls in here. Uh, and put the new blueprint in here, see what it says it's about. Inflicts a, pr a critical hit if your previous attack was with the right claw. Recovered from the stinking carcass of Mama Tick might come in handy. Oh, okay, so what you've got to do is get both of them. So you'd have to fight that battle again to get the blueprint for the other one, and then you can equip both of them and then attack with both of them at once. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Oh my goodness. Okay, so... I have now played through, like, the the levels that are on offer. Unlocking all the items that are on offer is going to take quite a bit longer. And I'm not going to be able to do that in this video, so I won't. Uh, I'm just going to jump onto the Dead Cells wiki here and just take a quick look at what is on offer. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba because I believe uh, that I, sh I I'm pretty I, like the sorry, I'm rambling. Uh, the mushroom boy or whatever is definitely from TBS. Okay, yeah, the blowgun also is. Uh, there it is. Rhythm. Second and third attacks are critical hits strike at the right time. Yeah. What is that a reference to? Oh. I was using it wrong. You can see sometimes I'm smashing with it, sometimes I'm playing it. What you have to do is press the button at the time it makes the sound. And it's, it's a rhythm mini game. It gives you critical hits if you press it at the right time. Oh, that's really cool. Oh. Okay, yeah, so... Based on, like these three weapons alone like i mean i mean that and the claws and the mushroom boy i think this is really worth getting it's really cool um this is a really really fun dlc um it's 
like affordable and it gives you a lot more options at the beginning of the game. Um, because yeah, it's you're branching out from having two uh, first tier choices to having three. Then you've got an extra set of level, an extra level after that, and then you've got an extra boss, and the extra boss is really fun. Yeah, I absolutely recommend this. Uh, I think it's real good, assuming, you know, you like playing Dead Cells. I like playing Dead Cells, so this works very well for me. Uh, I'm currently just flicking through to see... Yeah, I, yeah, okay, so the Spike Shield isn't uh, from the DLC, which is interesting. I guess that's just a regular item I hadn't managed to pick up yet. Hmm. But the Mushroom Boy definitely is. Oh, there's some other ones as well. Oh, cool. Interesting. Um, okay, um, anyway, yeah, so, yeah, I would absolutely recommend this if you enjoy Dead Cells. I enjoy Dead Cells. I'm gonna enjoy playing through these as an extra option as I play the game more, more and more. I'm really, really happy I managed to defeat Mama Tick, uh, the first try there. Oh, wow. It was real fun, and I really liked the little mushroom boy. It's adorable. Um, and I really like this new... This uh, guitar here, or whatever it is. <laughs> this this uh, new weapon. I adore it. Um, and it looks like all the extra stuff they give you is really, really cool. Um, and I think it's worth it, because this game is great, and I've played a lot of it. Uh, if I just jump into my little little page here. Uh, profile. 35 hours or more, there you go. <laughs> and that's like online hours. I've played this like on trains and stuff a lot, so it, it'd be more than that. And yeah, Dead Cells is real fun, and this DLC is real fun. And I love being able to hit people with a musical instrument. So... I would absolutely recommend this DLC, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, there's the Stilt Village, up here is the graveyard. Yeah, I've already been to both these places, so yeah, this is not part of the DLC now. It's just moving into normal gameplay. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope you had a good viewing of, of this game. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. Um... Bye!